Hi, I'm Lisa Bardot, and today I'm going to be teaching you about perspective. I'll be giving you a lesson on a one and two point perspective, the effects of manipulating your vanishing points, and I'll show you how to use Procreate's perspective guide feature. Then I'll show you how I use all of this to create this interior scene illustration. I've prepared a perspective worksheet that you can download for free and follow along and learn. You can find it on my website at bardobrush.com slash perspective. If you're new to Procreate, I recommend watching my intro to Procreate tutorial to get you familiar with all the basics. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss a future tutorial. This lesson is the third video in my Scene School series, where I teach you how to draw scenes and discover your style one piece at a time. You can find out more on the Scene School website, and I'll put a link in the description. So far, we've drawn a nature scene, a rural scene, and now we're starting to learn about interiors. So interior scenes have lots of walls and angles and flat planes and things like that. So that's why learning perspective is gonna be so important. Let's get started. So let's talk about perspective. Perspective is a method or technique that we can use to portray three-dimensional objects on the two-dimensional surface of a drawing. Perspective gives the illusion of depth and dimension and can give your drawings a sense of space. There are lots of ways to achieve this, but this lesson will focus on one and two point perspective. So let's start with a couple definitions. Horizon line. The horizon line is the imaginary or sometimes visible line that runs horizontally across a scene. This line denotes where the sky meets the sea or land, and it represents the viewer's eye level. Vanishing points are the points at which all lines seem to converge. So if you were to look straight down a road or something, you would notice the sides of the road would converge until they finally connect at what is known as the vanishing point. So what really is the difference between one and two point perspective? One point perspective is used when you're looking flat on something, like looking at a flat wall, not at from an angle. If all of the lines converge to a single point, that would be one point perspective. Here you can see that the back wall behind the bed is just a perfect square. We're not looking at it at an angle, it's straight on. So a two point perspective would be where if you're looking into a room, none of the walls are perfectly flat. You're looking at all the walls from an angle. So you can see that if I look at this room, we're looking at the corner and the two walls are both angled. None of the lines of the floor or ceiling are parallel. And that's essentially the big difference. When we're talking about interiors, if one of the walls is completely flat, that's one point perspective. If we're looking at into a corner and we're seeing that both walls are at an angle, that's two point perspective. So I'm gonna show you how to use Procreate's perspective guide feature to do a drawing in one point and two point perspective. Okay, let's go into Procreate and open the perspective worksheet. Again, you can download this file for free on my website at bardobrush.com perspective. When you open it up, you'll see two thumbnail frames. In the top, we'll be doing a one point perspective drawing and in the bottom, we'll be doing a two point perspective drawing. You'll also see a line going through each of these frames to represent the horizon line. Remember, the horizon line represents eye level, so I've placed these about a third of the way down in the frame. Open up the layers panel and you'll see some layers that I've already created for you. Just make sure that you begin drawing on the layer labeled sketch here. You'll notice underneath the layer name it says assisted, which means drawing assist is turned on for this layer. We'll get to that in just a sec. Let's go ahead and zoom in on the top frame and we're gonna begin first by doing a one point perspective drawing. To enable Procreate's drawing guide feature, first go to the actions menu, canvas, and toggle on where it says drawing guide. A grid will appear and we need to change that to a perspective guide. So let's go ahead and hit edit drawing guide. Down here, there's a few options and I want you to tap perspective. Now, nothing's gonna appear on the screen because we first need to create a vanishing point, as it says up here. So zoom in and then tap on that little dot right under where it says one. If you don't get it exactly right, you can move it around and just get it pretty close. And in order for us to do this perspective sketch, we need to make sure assisted drawing is turned on. That's what I mentioned earlier in the layers panel. Go ahead and hit done. Now, because we have the drawing guide on and assisted drawing is turned on, 
anywhere that we draw is now going to snap to these perspective lines that are set up through the perspective guide. And you'll see that as you start drawing. Now remember, a one point perspective drawing always has one flat plane or one like flat wall. So we're gonna go ahead and draw the back wall of our room and it's going to be flat, like a perfect rectangle. And because the assisted drawing is turned on, all of our lines are going to be perfectly straight. Now we'll draw the other two walls by drawing lines that connect from the four corners of the wall outward. All right, we've already got something that kind of looks like a room. Now we're going to add the furniture. Now when I draw objects in perspective, what I like to do is draw the footprint of that piece of furniture, whatever it is, on the ground, and then work my way up, build it up, and I'll kind of show you. We're going to draw a bed right now. So first I'm gonna draw the footprint of the bed, like where it actually sits on the ground. And then over here on the left wall, I'm going to draw the height of the bed. And you always wanna make sure that your lines connect at the corners so that everything lines up perfectly. Now you can see I'm just drawing the top edge of the bed to complete a 3D rectangle. And this represents our bed. This line down here is gonna be like the bottom of the mattress. And then I'm gonna draw a headboard kind of going up the wall. And then I'm gonna draw some lines coming up from the other side of the bed that will represent the footboard. Now I know this bed looks very boxy and boring and like perfectly geometrical, um, but that's okay, because what we're doing right now is we're actually just creating guides that are in perspective of the furniture pieces that we're going to draw by hand later on. So the next thing I'm gonna draw is a door frame over here. So I'll draw the shape of the door. Basically what we're doing is we're going through this entire room and creating all of the furniture and everything else as geometric 3D shapes, or 2D if it's on a wall. I'm going to put a picture frame over here above the bed. And remember, these are just gonna be guides. This is not our final drawing, so it's okay if like lines overlap where they shouldn't, like I'm doing the corners of the frame. Here on the wall, I'll put in a little shelf and I'll add a window over on the wall on this side. Now assisted drawing is doing a lot of the work of making sure that all the lines are going in the right direction to achieve this look of perspective. Over here on the other side of the bed, I wanna add like a round stool and table kind of thing. And you can't draw any round shapes when you're using this perspective guide assisted drawing feature. Um, so I am gonna represent this stool as a 3D rectangle, just another box. And then over on the other side of the room, I'll put in like a, like a dresser, a chest of drawers. So again, I'm just drawing another 3D rectangle box kind of thing over here. And I can even add in some lines to kind of give me an idea of where the drawers can go. And then maybe I'll put another picture frame on this wall. I'm just kind of like filling up the space with different things. And one more thing, I'm just gonna put in a big old rug right in the middle of the floor right here. All right, so this is my finished perspective sketch. We will be going through and making a refined sketch of this, but first we're going to do our two-point perspective sketch. So go ahead and move on down to the second thumbnail at the bottom. And now we need to change our perspective guide from one point to two point. So you can see I've got the two vanishing points laid out for you and where the horizon line needs to go. So let's go back to the actions menu and edit perspective guide. And we can actually just drag the vanishing point from the top frame down to the bottom frame and place it on the vanishing point that I've created for you. And then to actually make this a two point perspective drawing, we need to tap somewhere else on the canvas to add another vanishing point. So we're just gonna tap on that other circle. So go ahead and adjust them if you need to and then hit done. All right, so as a reminder, when we're doing two-point perspective, essentially we're looking into the corner of a room. There aren't any flat walls or flat planes. So I'm gonna start by drawing the corner line of the room. And from that line, we're going to extend out to the edges of the frame. And now you can already start to see this is looking like a room that is viewed like you're looking into the corner. So we're gonna draw basically the same scene that we drew in the previous thumbnail. Um, so let's go ahead and start with the bed. I'm gonna draw the footprint of the bed and then kind of where it sits along the wall and then the total height of that rectangle that makes up the bed as a 3D object. Drawing this line to show where the bottom of the mattress is. Adding in our headboard and our footboard. All right, so there's our bed. 
And over here on the right, I'm gonna add in the door frame. And now because of the angle, we don't really see the whole door frame. So I'm just gonna draw it all the way over to the edge of the frame. And then I'm gonna add in a little square over here for my picture frame. And then we're gonna add our shelf just like before. Now the only difference here is the shelf, you can see it in three dimension now because we're looking at this wall at an angle. So we do need to make sure that we draw that shelf in three dimensions. So just like creating a footprint on the floor, this first rectangle represents the, the way that the shelf hits the wall and then we'll draw it extending out of the wall. And for these little shelf brackets, they're diagonal, so I'm not gonna draw those in right now since they don't exactly follow the perspective lines. I draw the inside of my frame and then I'll move on to doing the window above the bed first as a rectangle and then I'll add in like the frame of the window. Next I'm going to add another 3D rectangle shape to represent the stool that's gonna be next to the bed. So first starting with the footprint of it and then kind of building it upwards to the right height that it needs to be. So I've got a little bit of extra room here beside my stool, so I'm gonna add in an armchair over here on the left. And I'm building this chair in essentially the same way as a series of 3D shapes. So it, it might be a little hard to see here what I'm doing, so I'm gonna kinda pull you aside and show you this in greater detail of how I can make a chair out of 3D shapes. So in order to draw anything in perspective, you first need to imagine it as just a really basic 3D shape. So that's what I'm gonna show you here. All right, so this is how I would build a chair out of like 3D QB rectangle shapes. First, I'm drawing the bottom of the chair, like where you would sit as a 3D rectangle. And then I'm going to add on the back of the chair as another shape. So most chairs have arms, so I'm gonna use these kind of like rounded rectangles to lay out where the arms are gonna go. And then from there, I can add details and curves and things that are not geometrical and rectangular to give it more shape, more volume, make it look softer, and not just like a super stiff, like a block of wood or something. I wanna make it look soft like it's a chair. So I've got some basic details on there and I'm gonna reduce the opacity of that sketch and then just go over it with more detailed lines, a little bit more refined with a little bit more texture and shape. So I'm rounding out a lot of lines and it's not like the best chair, but it gives you an idea of what you can do. And you can manipulate that basic like two 3D rectangles to create whatever kind of chair you want. So essentially that's how you do all the furniture is you start out with a 3D rectangle and then you add curved lines to it until it looks like you want it to look. <laughs> so here I'm drawing another rectangle and this could be like a laundry basket. These sketches aren't the best, but you know, you kind of get the idea. Add a little bit of laundry on top. <laughs> it's like a badly drawn sock. <laughs> That's all right. Um, maybe one more and this could be, we'll do something rounded. So this could be like a round stool. So I'll draw the roundness of the stool within that square that I already drew. And really, like, all a circle is, you guys, is a square with rounded corners. So they work with each other. <laughs> so as you can see, using that same rectangle, I drew this rounded stool. So you can really use rectangles to build just about whatever you want. And setting up the rectangle perspective will help you set up the furniture, whatever it ends up being, in perspective as well. So I hope that helps. I'm going to go back to our perspective drawing now. And the last thing we're gonna add to our scene is of course our big area rug on the floor. All right, so this scene is all done. Let me zoom out and you can see our two sketches, one and two point perspective. So at this point we are all done using the perspective guide so we can go back up to the actions menu and turn it off. And now we're going to refine these really basic, very geometric um, sketches to look like something that has a bit more personality. So I'm going to go to the sketch here layer and I'm going to reduce the opacity and then we're going to start working on the layer called refined sketch. And there's no drawing assist turned on this layer so you're just drawing freeform at this point. And I'm also going to turn off my horizon line and vanishing points. I don't need those anymore either. All right, so I'm gonna start with this little stool that we had next to the bed. As you can see, I'm drawing a round shape within that rectangular QB shape, 
just kind of using it as a guide. I'm not really going for perfection with these. I kind of want them to have a little bit of wonkiness, a little bit of personality, because that's my drawing style. So that's what I'm doing here. And then we will draw the post of the bed and I'll give it an arched um, headboard. Just drawing a curved line using that straight line on the previous layer as a guide. I'm gonna add a little pillow here and a blanket to my bed. And I'm just kind of drawing lines with more character over the top of the lines of the, the perspective sketch that I had done. Then I'm gonna add the footboard in the same way as two posts with kind of like an arch, an arch shaped over the top. And wow, this is a really long bed, <laughs> uh, maybe a little bit too long. Um, so kind of pay attention to scale as you're doing your perspective sketches. I might've made that be bed a little shorter, but whatever, <laughs> I'm going with it. All right, I'm gonna draw in my picture frame and some little details there and I'll even draw something in the picture frame. How about a little apple? And then I'll draw the shelf and add a few little details. I don't really need to draw anything on this wall necessarily in three dimension because it's all flat. I'm looking at it straight on so you can't really see a lot of dimension. Let's draw our door frame and add a doorknob to it. Don't forget to add the lines for like the floor, the walls and the ceiling as well. All right, let's draw our picture frame over on this side in the same way. And again, I like that the lines are a little wonky. That's really much more my style, but this is also just a sketch as well. In the end, if I were to color this in, I would probably refine it a little bit more, but I like it. Let's add a little couple, maybe a couple people in this picture. All right, and now we're gonna add that chest of drawers. And I had drawn some lines in my perspective sketch to kind of show me the way the lines for the drawers would go. So that's what I'm adding in right now. And you can see like they didn't get the angle of one side of the drawer exactly right. And it looks a little weird. It looks like it's leaning the wrong way or something. So you do wanna make sure you have the lines um, following those perspective lines or else it's gonna give your furniture, it's gonna make it look tilted or weird in a way that you might not want. So pay attention to that. Finally, we'll add our rug here at the bottom. Just gonna outline the shape of that. Add a couple stripes and some tassels on the end. Can't forget our window over on this side. All right, so this is my fully finished room drawn in perspective. I had used all of my perspective lines in my previous sketch as a guide. And now I have a drawing that still has some personality, but it's all drawn in correct perspective. All right, so next we're going to move on to our two-point perspective drawing. So we're working on the same layer. I'll go ahead and start with that little stool next to the bed, just drawing a round shape within that square shape that I had previously drawn. Add some legs that kind of, the legs kind of meet the points on the bottom of the cube, like this rectangular 3D shape. And this just ensures that it looks like it's firmly planted on the ground. Let's work on our bed next. I'm gonna draw the post and that kind of arched headboard. I'll add my pillow, a blanket, and this time we can see the footboard a lot more because we're looking at the room at a different angle. So you'll see the whole footboard this time. And I'll draw in my picture frame and my beautiful Apple artwork. <laughs> And for the shelf, remember we're looking at this at an angle, so it sticks off the wall. So we wanna make sure to draw that. And now that we're drawing like by hand, we can add in that kind of um, triangular shape for the brackets. Remember to make them in three dimensions. And I'm gonna add some items to the top of my shelf, maybe some books. Again, I'm making sure to draw these in three dimensions, otherwise they'll look funny like they're just weird little flat shapes stick sitting on top of a shelf. Okay, next I'm gonna work on my door frame and a doorknob and of course the we'll draw the floor and the walls and all those lines to make the room look like a room. I'm gonna draw my window next. And next I'm gonna work on doing the chair, kind of curving out certain parts just kind of winging it here on this chair, trying to make it look kind of chair-like. 
All right, and then we're gonna add our area rug down at the bottom with the same stripe and the tassels. And now our two point perspective drawing is complete. So here we have it, a one point perspective drawing of a room and the same room in two point perspective. As I'm zooming in here, I see that I forgot a couple lines on the floor, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw those in. But overall, it looks really good. And there's one more thing I wanna show you, and that is what happens when you change your vanishing points. So in Procreate, I just wanted to show you that it's possible to extend your vanishing points beyond the edges of your canvas. And that's gonna look something like this. And this will have an effect on how your drawing looks. Let me show you. So this is similar to the drawing I did with you earlier with the same placement of the vanishing points. Let me show you what it looks like if I extend those vanishing points. It looks a little bit different. Let me show you that again. So here's the first one with the vanishing points just outside the frame. And you can see the lines all converging to those vanishing points. And here I have the vanishing points a lot further out. And then of course you can see how those lines all converge to those vanishing points. And you can see those two look a lot different. So what you're gonna get is that if you have the vanishing points closer together, it's going to look a lot more distorted, almost like you're using a wide angle lens to view your scene. But if you put your vanishing points further apart, you're going to get less distortion and more compression where things like look like they're overlapping each other a bit more. So kind of find that balancing point of where you wanna put your vanishing points based on the kind of scene that you want to create. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how I use this technique of using the Procreate Perspective Guide feature to make this interior scene. So I developed this interior scene using the scene school process that I've taught you in my previous two videos. If you're not familiar with it, go check those two videos out and I'm gonna give you like a quick run through of it. So the components for the interior scene are seating, decor items, house plants, furniture, and lighting. So these are my studies for seating. I sketched out a bunch of chairs and sofas and colored in a couple. And I'm also kind of experimenting with my style. So I did the style in a couple different ways. These are my decor item sketches. So I keep a bunch of Pinterest boards of like home decor inspiration as you do. Um, so basically I just went through those and scrolled through Pinterest and kind of drew whatever it was that I liked. Next, I drew a whole bunch of house plants and colored those in as well. And for this piece, I also wanted to work from a limited color palette. So I chose one from my free Procreate color palette library. And this one is called Harvest Soup. Then I sketched a bunch of end tables, coffee tables, and cabinets and colored in a few of those. So the last component is lighting. Um, so I sketched a whole bunch of different styles of lights and colored in a couple of those as well. So as you're putting together your interior scene, there is an order to which you should put all the components into the scene, and that is this. First, walls. Second, largest furniture pieces. After that, you put in your smaller furniture items. Then you add in your lamps, lightings, windows, that sort of thing. And finally, finish it out by decorating with house plants and decor items. So we have all these components, and we need to put them together to create a final scene. But it can really be difficult to visualize and lay out the elements of a room in three dimensions. So I recommend putting together a two dimensional floor plan. First, I drew a big rectangle and that represents the room itself. The next thing I did was determine the angle of view. I'm gonna be looking in from this angle down here at the bottom. So I'm looking into the corner of the room. And if you remember, if we're looking into the corner of the room, we're gonna be using two point perspective. So that's what I'll use for this drawing. So I added my largest furniture pieces, which are the sofa and the chair, and then some of the smaller furniture pieces like the coffee table, the bookshelf, the end table. Next was the lighting. I added in a lamp and window, and then I got started on my decor items. I added in a plant, some wall art, maybe a basket over here, a mirror on the wall. I'll kind of add more of this stuff as I work on the actual drawing, but it's good to lay out some of the, some of the bigger items. And then these two walls over here, we aren't gonna see at all. So I'm not worrying about putting anything on those two walls. Those essentially are behind the viewer. You won't be able to see them. So here is my finished floor plan for my room, and I'm ready to get started working on the perspective sketch of this. 
So this is just a time lapse, so you can't see it, but I have Procreate's Perspective Guide feature turned on. I have Assisted Drawing turned on, and I'm putting in all my furniture, again, as 3D rectangular shapes, according to that floor plan that I had designed previously. And once I've done that, I'll reduce the opacity of that sketch and start drawing everything by hand using a little bit more character with more round shapes, give everything the form and texture that I want it to have. And ultimately, I want to get my sketch as refined as possible before I start coloring. So there's a lot of details here. I definitely spent a long while putting this one together. Um, but scenes can take a long time, but it's a lot easier to approach if you had spent the time creating all those components. I'm not imagining any of these furniture pieces off the top of my head right now. I've already done that work. And this, this is what we're going for. This finished refined sketch is what we want to create after going through all that really meticulous perspective work, which isn't that meticulous. It wasn't too hard, <laughs> um, but it looked very like geometric and not no personality. Um, so this is the sketch that I want that has all my style and personality, and now I'm ready to color it in. And this is my finished interior scene, drawn in two-point perspective. Perspective can be a little intimidating, but I think once you follow this process, you can simplify it a little bit and you'll find a way to incorporate it into your work in a way that suits your personality, your artistic style. As you can see, knowing how to use and manipulate perspective is going to give your scene illustrations a greater sense of depth and an extra touch of realism. I hope I've inspired you to draw things from a new perspective. You can learn more about Scene School on my website. I'll put a link in the description. Scene School is a part of the Making Art Every Day Challenge, a free series of daily drawing prompts, tutorials, motivation, and a supportive community, all with the goal of helping you overcome your creative fears and establish a daily art making practice. Learn more at bardobrush.com slash join MAE. If you're posting artwork to Instagram made with my brushes or tutorials, I would love to see it. Use the hashtag Bardo Brush. And for this tutorial, don't forget to use the hashtag Scene School. Thanks and happy art making. If you like this video, please subscribe for more awesome tutorials and check out one of my other videos. Have a great day.